Is that an expo? XCQL. Is this good, chat? Kiss me, you sick runt. Vacations to another country can be some of the best times of your life. Getting away, you have the experiencing a culture a nothing like your own, and traversing through some that. of the most memorable yeah. places on earth are truly something to hold with you for a lifetime. Oftentimes on said trips, warnings are made to stay within the boundaries of where you're supposed to be, whether it be a hotel, a host family's house, or even a resort. It's generally pretty strongly urged to, without a guide, stay on the path set forth in front of you. Unfortunately, many of us have that growing instinct of curiosity. What if we ventured out on our own, ignored the warnings, and truly explored where we were? How badass would that be? Nothing that bad Number 18. That could Burger. ever happen to us. <laughs> I can't do this. Right? Except, it can. And when it comes to the tragic case surrounding two girls from the Netherlands on their trip to Panama, it did. Today, we're going to explore the evidence and story surrounding the harrowing disappearance of Chris Kramers and Lizanne Froon. Chris Kramers and Lizanne Froon are two girls from the Netherlands who made their way to Panama to celebrate Chris graduating from school. They arrived to the country on March 15, 2014 and explored around for two weeks before reaching their destination, the city of Bouquet, on March 29th. The girls allegedly had plans to volunteer to work with the local school and to improve upon their own Spanish. Chris carried around a diary and allegedly she noted that the aforementioned school let them know that they arrived an entire week early and were pretty rude about it. Anyway, on April 1st, 2014, at around 10 a.m., the girls embarked with the host family's dog on a hike up the La Pianista Trail near the Continental Divide. Everything seemed to go pretty well, and the host family had believed everything was fine. Up until a few hours later when the family's dog returned home without the girls. The host family was immediately worried and called the police. Unfortunately, the National System of Civil Protection, or Cineproc as they call it in the region, took the case very lightly and didn't take action for four whole days. During this time span, Local residents and tour guides were assisting the family in searching for the missing girls themselves since police lacked any sort of desire for immediate action. Once the search finally did start, officials were met with a huge roadblock. The girls didn't exactly tell anybody where they were going when they left, so search teams had little to go off of. The search then commenced, to no avail. Hours turned into days. Days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months, until June 9th of that same year when a Nagobi woman found a backpack and turned it into police. She had claimed that she found it on the riverbank of the Serpent River. Strangely, it was dry and packed well. Inside were two bras, two pairs of sunglasses, a small water bottle, Lazanne's camera, two smartphones, a passport, and $83. The police decided to investigate the call records and photos that were on the phones and- Chat, hold up. Is this cooked? Can I eat this? Camera, Check. and what they found allowed them to start piecing together the puzzle. Allegedly, the girls had taken over 100 pictures on their venture. The strange part is, only about 10 of them were taken during the daytime. The remaining 90 plus were all at the late, late hours between 1 to 4 in the morning, and 87 of those remaining 90 show nothing but blackness. A lot of mystery surrounds the final image that the girls took, which was purportedly taken 8 days after the start of the hike. It shows some sort of rock formation or yeah, a trail. I think they're using the flash to see what they're doing. Right? They're taking pictures, so the flash was up, so they, they could see shit. However, the orientation of the camera is debatable. Some people claim that it's a shot looking forward, down a trail, while others have stated that it could be pointing up a cliff. One huge mystery that I can't quite wrap my head around surrounds the timing of this photo. Let's think about it. The girls started their journey at around 10 a.m. on April 1st. This photo was taken on April 8th. Presumably by this point in time, the girls, to our knowledge, had minimal amounts of water on them due to the contents that were found in the backpack. 
How would either of them be alive at this point to take this photo? The human body can go anywhere from 7 to 10 days without water, with 10 days being on the less common end of the spectrum. These girls have been out in the jungle all of this time, presumably exhausting themselves while trying to find their way back home. How did they make it this long? It's just a question that hasn't ever escaped my mind since the first time I took a look at this photo and learned of the timestamp. Anyway, I digress. The reason for the photo is largely unknown, but say, one of the girls did take it, along with all 87 of the other pitch black photos. A theory is that they could have been lighting up the path in front of them in order to save their phone battery so they could use that to check for a signal. That actually ties into my next segment of the story. The phones. Police were able to extract the call records from their devices, and they found that the girls made their initial attempt to call 112, the Dutch emergency line, and 911, the Panamanian emergency line, just hours after starting their hike. This tells us that on day one, something went wrong here. Throughout the course of time from April 1st through April 6th, the girls would make intermittent attempts at early morning or late night hours to power on their phones to check for a signal before powering them off again shortly after. One strange thing to note here is that after April 6th, multiple incorrect PIN attempts were entered into the iPhone and police had determined that a successful PIN was never entered again from this point forward. That fact right there is strange to me and I have two theories to discuss here. Backing up to the photos, I wanted to make one quick point. Police had found that the file names of the images were numbered starting at 499. For instance, their first image was 499, their second image was 500, so on and so forth. Right. One strange part about this is that they could never find image 509. We have over 100 images that were left on the camera, and the only image that is missing is conveniently the one between the final daytime image and the first nighttime image. Why, through all of this, would the girls be concerned with deleting any image from their phone, especially while in a situation like this? That would be the absolute last thing I'd ever be thinking of doing. Investigators were never able to recover the photo, and they had determined that it wasn't deleted I was being chat. Say that again? Girls be concerned with deleting any image from their phone, especially while in a situation like this. That would be the absolute last thing I'd ever be thinking of doing. Investigators were never able to recover the photo, and they had determined that it wasn't deleted through the camera itself. Jumping back to the pin numbers again, what if there was a third party involved? There very well could have been someone else in these woods following the girls, and trying to potentially murder them. Say this third party was successful, they could be potentially trying to wipe information which, strangely, could be related to the missing photo 509. Try. Now, before you grill me then why not wipe the entire phone? Or on this theory, photos? hang tight because I have something to back this up shortly. Or break it. Anyway, the other theory that I have surrounding this is the idea that Chris was either unconscious or dead due to injury or other natural causes and left her iPhone with Lizanne. Lizanne likely didn't know the password to it and made multiple guess attempts at getting into it, potentially to try to make more phone calls or use the flashlight. True. Since she realized that it was hopeless, she powered it back off and never turned it on again. Back to the investigation. Locals had found Lazanne's shorts upstream from where the backpack was found, and this is where the inconsistencies and glaring holes of police mismanagement come into play. The official story is that the shorts were found neatly folded on a rock. However, according to the guide that found them, they were in an eddy on a river near a monkey bridge. Accompanying these shorts, the locals claimed that they found Chris's boot with their foot still in it and a fragment of Lazanne's pelvis, which appeared to be sun bleached. They also found multiple bone fragments. Okay, this is fine. Undetermined. With the photos in hand, the shorts found, and the bones identified, the police had determined that Chris had fallen off a nearby monkey bridge and either went unconscious or dead, and Lizanne had left to go to find help. Since her backpack contained nothing of true use, she ditched it nearby, and with that, her shorts, since they could have been chafing her. On the way back, she used the camera to take photos of the blackness to light up the trail in front of her, and during that trek back, exhausted or injured herself and passed away. Solved, right? Right. Well, 
This story is highly contested due to extreme police mismanagement. Allegedly, other fingerprints were found on the backpack. However, the findings proved to be useless since they weren't tracking prints through the investigation. Also, as we said before, Cineproc took four entire days to begin the search mission, and as we know, the first 24 hours are the most vital part of any search and rescue. There's also one other thing. Remember that theory that it had earlier about a third party being involved? Let's gather our evidence that supports that really fast. First, we have a missing image 509, which conveniently bridges the gap between the last daytime and first nighttime image. We have a backpack that was found on a riverbank that was completely dry and well packed. We also have some bone fragments that are belonging to a third party, there are unidentified fingerprints on the backpack, and lastly, both bodies completely decomposed and were broken apart after just 9 weeks between April and June? Hmm. Something seems strange here. Chat, these are fine. I say no, this because just last year, a girl named Catherine Yohannet was visiting the same region of Panama and was brutally strangled to death by her own shirt while she was hiking in the region. To date, only one teen suspect has been identified in the case. What if this same person has something to do with the strange disappearances of Chris and Lizanne? It really is strange to me, and something about this case, particularly with the final night image, doesn't add up to me. The tragic death of Chris Kramers and Lizanne Frone is truly a mystery, and I hope that someday, some actual answers can be found with this case. While there's much speculation surrounding the possibility of a third party being involved, this very well could be a simple case of going hiking unprepared, getting lost, and dying due to lack of food or water combined with the possible injury. While we may never truly know where these girls went, or what transpired on those presumably endless 10 days of agony, we can always speculate with the evidence that we do currently have. Right. We just explored the harrowing mystery surrounding the disappearance Chat. of Chris Kramers and Lizanne Froon. Chat, you know what? This Chat. is a case that's baffled me for quite some time. And All right. Chat, here's my take. Okay. Wait, this doesn't really require a take. Chat, it's scary, dude. That when you go hiking in like some weird places, yo. It's like jungles of jungle and like infinite jungles, dude. Right? It's like... People could get away with it, you know? Like, that's really scary, man. And that, that probably makes them more inclined to do it, yo. Right? Yeah, infinite jungle! Yeah! Like the Amazonian! Or some shit. Yo, guys, guys, I don't mind all the cooling, hey, dude. But my you, first you guys time donating, you should play keep, Overlord. like, I think you and doing, like, like Craigasm and XCK when they show, like, people that are dead and shit. That is XQC so fucking love your stream. weird, dude. Did you think about the fact that black culture is the only culture that uses racist or well, derogatory terms not to smart. address each other? There are racist names for other cultures, but it's not acceptable or normal if they use amongst thieves. Motherfucker, who the fuck is you? In, in one year of following you, one year, you've typed four, eight messages. And one of it is cable wrong. And wow, you are not smart. What Pogu. the fuck is going through your head, dude? Jesus, dude. Seven months Pogo love the streams PVC XQCL. Wait, I'm not smart. Guys, the likeliness of somebody getting away with something yeah, might be the sole or biggest motivator in them doing it, I think. If somebody plants a gem in a 60,000 miles jungle, okay, and says, yo, dude, I'll leave it here for a couple days. If you yoink it, who's gonna know? What will happen? It's so fucking That makes you more likely to yoink it. It's so raw I can hear it moving three head. Okay. Their death has been ruled an accident. This is fake and overhyped. It's in Dutch online newspapers if you need verification. 
For example, type add.nl crease and Lian. Yo, the A! Hey! I'm trying to watch a video and get scared synthetically. Don't ruin it with your fucking logic and fucking use, man. Fuck, dude. Even if it's just for the day. Join your stay outside the sun. It is shining. 